am a little bit slow now in things because I have I had a bad accident. I, I think you know about it. So I'm recuperating. I'm coming back. I sung in Philadelphia and I, I was proud of myself and I sung in in, in Miami a photo deal. And I was so proud of myself because it it was a head injury, so I couldn't remember some 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 of my song, but they come back to me now. God has been good, so I'm just glorifying God. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode of the Roadblock Podcast. I'm your host, Nicolette Swaby, and I'm so excited to bring you this heart-to-heart conversation. And I'm super, super, super duper excited about this special episode. And I hope that you will get excited with me as we'll be having a heart-to-heart conversation with one who has been a mentor in music, a minister to our hearts, anointed in the ministry of of praise and worship and the psalmist ministry. I am speaking of one who on Saturdays and on Sundays, we would be listening to the CDs. I remember playing her music in the radio station. Let me tell you, by the grace of God, or we can go to the traditional gospel medley. This group, the Grace Thrillers, indeed thrilled our hearts. And today, we have the lead singer from the Grace Thrillers, Minister Shirley Willis, who will be sharing with us. You've been singing for years. Years. Because you grew up in church. You were singing in church, singing on the choir. Tell us about that. When I was a, a little girl, I got baptized and started serving my God, started running with the vessel. You know, God has been so good to me. And I went to high school. I tell everybody about Jesus. And I go to college. I tell everybody about him. Until somebody heard me singing in college one. I used to just keep singing. And went and tell Noel that you want this girl in the group, man, she can sing. And right there... Noel called me and I started singing with the Grace Thrillers. You said one of the songs or the, the first song you did with the Grace, Grace Thrillers, Thrillers, By the, Grace, by of the God. Grace of God. Let me hear that one. By the grace of God, Lord, I am saved. By the grace of God, I am saved. Glory, glory, Jesus, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. By the grace of God, I am saved. That's that's it. That's it. Mm. I was born to do this and I'm doing what I'm destined, my destined, what I was destined for. And I, people tell me all the while I gave my life to the Lord, just listening to you. And I, 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 I I put out it with, with everything I have. So I just pray and hope it reaches someone and it do because people telling me all the while. How blessed they were. Thank God. I hope that it's encouraging our listeners and our viewers that there is an anointing that comes when you are doing what you were born to do. Yes. You know, because that's what you experienced. That's what I experienced. Praise God. Which is why even 
through trials and temptations and the, the one that we're coming to know the accident yes even that couldn't stop the couldn't anointing stop on me. your life couldn't stop me i would just sing from my heart and everybody would know that it, it's coming from deep down you know and um praise god i went on until i had an accident and everybody said Shirley died but to god be the glory i'm on my feet again amen still singing for the lord i was living with my sister and i went to the to jamaica and when i went down it happened i went to sing at a funeral and went to the hairdresser and going back home now the accident occurred I rented a car and I was driving. But I just thank the Lord. Every opportunity I get to give him praise and worship, I just thank him. Amen. That he did not take me home that time. When I came to New York and I didn't even know, they, 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 took, up, they took up to my cot, but I slept on at the hospital. And um, on the plane, so that time I don't know nothing. And um, when I reached a friend of mine, Rosemary Gammon, she was an, she's a nurse. She, 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 I, I live with her in, in, um, in New York. And she came from at the airport. I didn't even know her. And this was my friend who I accustomed to. And she and she took me to the to the um, to the hospital where she works, and um, I remember I said to myself when I woke up one morning, "What am I doing here?" Oh God! And the 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 nurse said, "You you're in hospital. You you met a bad accident, so they carry you here, you know." But I just I just give God the glory, cause. If it, hadn't be, if it had not been for him on my side, I know I wouldn't be here talking to you this morning. I can run again. Mm. The doctor said I would never walk. But I believe the last word come from God about my life, you know. It was a really hard time um, those few months. So we just had to believe that she was going to, um, you know, get out of it and, and bounce back. Despite of what the doctors were saying, um, thank God that our parents grew us up the way they, they grew us up. And we, as we got older, we develop our own relationship with God and were um, strong enough and mature enough to know that we needed to rely on him in that, in that time, during that time. Um, lots of prayer, lots of praying, um, coming together as a family, me and my siblings, um, to be there for her. I remember one when one of the days we went to visit her um in the hospital and me and my brothers we would always sing this song, Mama, uh Boys to Men song. We used to sing that to her a lot. Um every every Mother's Day we would sing that song for her. And um we went in the hospital room. Actually they were only allowing one person at a time to go in the room to see her. But for some reason, they allowed me and my brothers to go in there. So three of us went in there together and um, we started to sing for her. And we weren't getting any response from mom before. So we'll go in there, we'll touch her, we'll talk to her. Because, you know, they say when they're unconscious, they could still hear. Um, so we went in there and um, we started to sing. And then she started to move her, her hand. And then my brother started crying. And I'm like, oh, gosh, no, don't do this. And then, of course, I saw them crying and then I started crying and it was just it was, yeah, it was one of those one of those moments. Um, we were happy to see response that she moved. She heard the song and she moved her hand and she there was no response for a while. So it was good to um, to see that. But that's just one of the, the stories um, or one of the, the things that I remember during that time when my mom was going through. So I seen where she came from and where she's at now um i can only give god thanks and give god praise for that um it's, it's amazing the doctors told her that she wouldn't be able to open up her 
her eyes the doctor told her that she wouldn't be able to sing at one point she had like a tube in her throat and when she talked she was like talking very not like herself of course and you couldn't really make out her words and um just to see how she's bounced back and where she's at now is like to god be the glory he has the final say he's our he's the, 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 our doctor our ultimate doctor no matter what any doctor or, or medical profession has to say he has the final word and he knew that he um you know he was not done with her yet he was not through with her and there's still work for her to do so giving that thanks for that for sure what's the biggest thing you would say you've learned from that experience just uh, it brought me closer to god because i could have died and i don't want to accept the lord from such a young age and die and don't see god's face so it brought me close to him and everything i just be careful of what i say or do what would you say to those who may be going through hard times sickness and they feel as though I'm losing my praise in this. You've been through a lot of hard times. What would you say to encourage those who are in it right now? Go through, go through your crisis. Just go through it and pray and, and, and just give God thanks. Because before I sleep in the night, I just thank the Lord. I just worship, worship in Thanksgiving because I'm alive. Bless the Lord. Amen. That secret place. That secret place. There is something about the secret place where you can go. Hallelujah. To many miles behind me. To many trials I do. Help me to remember There is too much Too much to gain To lose Too many Many sunset Lying Behind the mountain Too many rivers Lord, my feet have walked through too many, too many treasures. Lord, awaiting over yonder. There is too much, too much to gain, to lose. I have crossed. The hot burning desert, my Lord, struggling the right road to choose. Hallelujah. But somewhere up ahead, there is cool, clear water. And defeat is one word I don't care. Too many, too many sunsets, oh, lie behind the mountain. Too many rivers, too many rivers, my feet have walk through too many treasures lord awaiting over yonder there is too much too much to gain to lose there is too much too much to gain, to lose. There 
is too much, too much to give to lose. I give thanks to the Lord. He promised never to give a, give you more than you can bear. And the Lord knew at that time I could not have missed it. I couldn't have gone through that. So it happened. And we give thanks to know that she's still alive. And when I heard, I was devastated. I leave immediately for Jamaica. And I, when I get to Jamaica, and I saw her, I said, no, nope, you can't see down here. She got to go. So I was determined to get her out of Jamaica to, you know, make sure she's okay. And God just opened the door. It's that, you know, she's here. And we're grateful. Well, it's good to know the Lord. Because indeed, he's a present help in the time of trouble. Amen. And seek a friend before you need a friend. If you know him and you know what he can do, you don't have to worry that much because you know that there's nothing impossible for God. And anything you go through, you know you're not alone. He's right there with you. And yes, we have to go go through our go through. But when you know that you know that you know that the Heavenly Father is with you and that he won't give you more than you can bear, you can rest assured it's going to be all right. And you just keep on thanking him. Just say, Lord, thank you because I know it's going to be all right. Don't give it to him and take it back. Give it to him and say, Lord, I leave it in your hands and I know you'll work it out. And he will work it out. Amen. 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 You can't do anything without the Lord in your life. And you can't hold on to a grudge and move forward. Amen. You must let go. There's, there's no baggage. You can't take the baggage with you. And if the, if, if, if the oath that you're watering the lawn with is kink, it can't flow. You have to let it be. Let it flow so it can, you can get the full force of it. So, you know, for, unforgiveness is just holding your own self back. You can't get the fullness when you're when there's unforgiveness in your heart. Let it go and let God have his way in your life. And you will look back. After a while, you'll look back and say, how did I made it over this? And that's because you let it go. Let unforgiveness go and move on. Because there's joy, there's peace, and there's victory ahead. And you don't want anything to forfeit that. You want to hold on to his hands. And he would want you to let it go. So that he could have his way in your life. And so that you could pass the button on to somebody else. And tell them how it was letting go. Let it go and let God. Amen. I always said this. I would never like somebody to hate somebody. I can't go see my Savior face. I prefer put it down and make it up. And if anything happened to me. I don't see my save of it, save of it. You can't carry the malice and the grudge. Back. You hold yourself yes. back when mm -hmm. you do that. Because most of the time, when you, the person you carry the grudge for, way on their way, don't even Making remember sometimes. Right. Yes. And there you are, stuck on that step, mm -hmm. holding a grudge. While they're gone ahead of you and they're making their way. Thank you, Let Jesus. it go. It's not worth yes. it. Yes. I'm blessed the Lord. I am free. I sing this song. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No more chain holding me. And I meant it from my heart. I am free. Amen. Amen. Can we sing that one? Mm -hmm. I am free. You know it? You heard this yeah, yeah, when I, 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 I'm young, mm -hmm. but I, I know a little of it. <laughs> I am free. Praise the Lord. I am free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, thank God it's a blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I am free. Let's give it a touch oh, wow. of it. Free. That's a touch of it. At mm. last. Come on. Free. At, at last. Praise the Lord. I'm free at last. I'm free at last. I'm free at last. Free at last. 
am free at last. Praise the Lord, Lord. I'm free. Free at last. I'm free at last. Praise the Lord. I'm free at last. Free at last. I'm free at last. Praise the Lord. I'm free. God, I am free. I want you to to speak to young creatives, young ministers, gospel artists. You've actually mentored a lot of them and you have them as your children too. You have your sons, your nephews who are doing music. Yes. What's the biggest uh, um, takeaway from your life and encouragement that you would give those who are coming up? In just the tell them just keep their eyes on Jesus mm-hmm. and, and strive to get close to him. You know, just strive to get close to him and you will be close to him. That's if things, ha- things happen like what it happened. Things not always perfect, but God will see you through. Yeah. God will see you through. I, I went, I, I passed through the storm, but I'm still standing. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. First song, keep me safe till a storm passes by. And I, 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 that song relate to me so much because he kept me safe while, my, while I'm going through the storm. Let me hear that one. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Just a little touch. Yes, just a little touch. <laughs> Can you think of um, one gospel artist, a young and upcoming gospel artist, who you would say, I like that one. I'm expecting big things from that one. Yes. I'm my pastor's son. What's his name again? Juni? Jermaine Edwards. Jermaine Edwards. He sings some lovely song, but he's my pastor son. Okay. And it really touches me. And I just want to tell Jermaine that the Lord will keep him safe until the storm passes by. Because every one of us have our storm. A little storm there and a little storm there. But storm, every one of us have our storm. Praise God. Amen. Amen. What a time it has been inside of this episode of the Roadblock Podcast. I am blessed. I laughed. I was encouraged. I was blessed, empowered by the life of a mother in the gospel, a sister in the gospel, a minister who has touched so many lives and getting to also experience her family and just the love and the music. What a blessing. I hope that you were thoroughly enriched and edified by this episode of the Roadblock Podcast as we share the life of Minister Shirley Willis. Thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you will continue to be blessed and to continue inside of your own journey to trust God that it doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter what you have experienced that God God remains faithful. God is. I'm going to allow Minister Shirley Willis to give us a piece of God is and take us out. Until next time, I'm Nicolette (laughs) Swaby. I'm Nicholas Baby saying rejoice, feel the breeze, smell the roses, smile with your neighbor, and walk on, warrior. Bye for now. 
Y yo aquí me cago en eso. Lord. 